Jesus cares for you. He knows what you have not yet achieved this year. He knows uh, what you have to obtain. He knows that you want school fees or tuition. He knows that you want to build a house. But when you come to worship, this is what Jesus says. He says that put aside all that worry. Put aside all that stress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a, I'm going to share with, with you some experience. There's a time I came, I uh, wanted to, I passed here by church and uh, tried to worship and pray. Hallelujah. So as I was praying and worshiping, uh, I was uh, almost there. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, almost there. Almost there. So I came with my phone, both phones. Hallelujah. When I came with both phones, uh, I press them there. As every businessman, uh, he comes with his phones. In case of any call, he's able to pick the call and do the business. Hallelujah. So, I came to worship, but I came with my cares. Hallelujah. In my mind, I was to worship God and at the same time, do business. Hallelujah. So, as I was almost there, Guess what happened? Someone called me. And you know we business people, most of business people have such phones. Hallelujah. Most business people have these small phones. And you know how they make a lot of noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when, they, uh, when I, I, I saw the call, I muted it. Because I, wanted, I didn't want anything to distract me, but continue. But the devil... Tell somebody that the devil is a liar. He kept on, he kept on preaching to me. Hallelujah. He said, you never know. That might be a business deal which you have never done. Hallelujah. So my heart was <laughs> here and there, worshiping, and I wanted to pick up that call because it had not even brought the, na the contact name. So uh, I continued worshiping. I, for I left the phone, but... The devil kept on preaching. And you know, it, it brings even a situation and it reminds you of something which had ever happened before. There's a time when I had, uh, uh, I had forgotten my phone in the car and uh, they called me like 10 times. So I missed a business which I was supposed to profit a lot. Hallelujah. So the devil whispered in my ear and I was like, you remember that day when you missed those calls and you missed such a deal? So I was like, ah, let me pick up the phone. Hallelujah. So I picked up the phone call and guess what? <laughs> Someone called me and it was like, <laughs> it was not even a business call. Hallelujah. It was... <laughs> it was, I don't know even how it called. I felt anger. Stay your neighbor. Holy anger. <laughs> holy anger. I was mad at myself. So I tried to put up myself, go back to worship. I, <laughs> but I couldn't. Hallelujah. I couldn't. So what I had to do is to stop there and say, Lord, thank you. And I went. Hallelujah. But why did I bring up this? It distracted me from where I was about to reach. You never know what would have happened. Hallelujah. You never know what God would have spoken to me through that worship. Hallelujah. But I was distracted by this phone from worshiping. That's why now when I come, I leave my phones in the car or I put them in total silence. Whether who is calling, I don't even know. See the call because I want to concentrate on worshiping God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's another story similar to mine. It's found in the book of John. Chapter, I think it's, verse, it's chapter 10. Let's read from verse 1. Hallelujah. Many of us, not only, it's not only me, are distracted uh, by our phones. Whenever pastors pastor is preaching, uh, especially for those who own iPhones. Hallelujah. They are so addicted to their phones that every minute they have to look at their phone. Hallelujah. 
They are so addicted to their phone. So, it's not only me. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, chapter 10. Mostly assuredly, I say to you. Is this the first? No, it's 12, sorry. John 12. John chapter 12. Yeah. Verse 1 to 8. Okay. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who, was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Next verse. There they made him a supper, and Martha served him. You see the problem with Martha? Still Jesus came, and for her she concentrated with cooking and serving. Then the, it says, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Next verse. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spike nard, anointed the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mary knew who Jesus was. Hallelujah. Mary he was a true worshiper. Wherever he came to the presence of Jesus, for her she put all her cares away. Even she reached an extent of bringing her very costly, the Bible calls it costly oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the following verses, we shall see how much it costed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spike night, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. That alone, that act is an act of worship. Hallelujah. It means that there's nothing that you can withdraw or something you cannot come with to worship your God. Hallelujah. If it means your car, if it means your money, if it means anything that you have ever owned, it means that uh, you must come with all what God has given you to worship Him. Hallelujah. That's why it is very, very important to always come and worship God with everything that He has given to you, with your family, with your children, with... Uh, Every material thing God has blessed you with, it's important that it sh you should worship with your God with it. Hallelujah. Because when you focus on the things, it will distract you uh, from worshiping God. Hallelujah. It will distract you from worshiping God in spirit. And the Bible has said that God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in the first place, I told you that there are true worshippers and false worshippers. Maybe you, you have been worshipping falsely and you didn't know. But this time, you have known. Hallelujah. You're going to check out yourself and worship your creator. Hallelujah. Putting all those cares uh, behind. There's nothing that God is not able to do. Hallelujah. There's nothing that he cannot do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why you should always come. Even if you're stressed, even if you, uh, things maybe are not moving well, come and worship God. Maybe you never know. Through worship, God will settle your problem. Hallelujah. God is able to settle your problem. If you have prayed, if you have fasted and things are not moving, Try out this. Worship him. Hallelujah. The devil always wants to see you complaining like, uh, it tricked Martha and complained. Martha complained that why should I be the one alone serving Jesus when my sister is there seated? Hallelujah. Jesus told Martha that Mary is obtaining something which is eternal. Hallelujah. For you are on the things which are temporal or which are temporary. Hallelujah. For the things which are seen, they are all Temporal, but the things which are unseen, they are eternal. That's Second Corinthians, I think the fourth chapter, you get the verse. Hallelujah. Let's continue with verse 4. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, uh -huh, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? Hallelujah. Uh, take a minute there. Judas Iscariot had already calculated the worth of the oil. 
He was a very good businessman. Hallelujah. So we learn also something from this, that even if God knew that Judas would betray Jesus or would betray his son, even if Jesus knew that Judas would betray him, but he still gave him the ministry to be the treasurer of the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. So despite of what you have done, whether you have sinned, whether you have uh, uh, done the most worst thing, hallelujah, Jesus can still use you, hallelujah. He can change you and use you for his purpose, hallelujah. We learn from that that even if Judah would betray him, but he still used him as the treasurer. Next verse. This he say not that he cared for the poor, but he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was to put in it. Many a time, the devil whispers to you and is like, now, why should you take your tithe to your pastor? Why should you give this money to your pastor? Why shouldn't you give uh, to the poor? And you miss out the blessing of tithing. Hallelujah. So the devil will try to bring a destruction in your life that will cause you to not worship the Father with your belongings. Hallelujah. With your tithings. Hallelujah. But now that we have known, hallelujah, we are not going to uh, refrain our belongings to, from serving our God. Hallelujah. We shall tithe. Hallelujah. We shall bring offering. Hallelujah. This he said because he did not care for, you see even his motive, Judas, it was not for caring for the poor. Hallelujah. He just wanted to steal the money from the treasury because he, he, since he was the treasurer, he wanted to get money. So, next verse. Let's see. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for me for my burial. Next verse. For the poor you have with you, Always, hallelujah. The devil will always try to distract you from your purpose. Hallelujah. Now he's, he tried to bring in this thing to show you that what, when you do this, you will be so kind. You have done good by giving to the poor. When it has reflamed you, when it has stopped you, when it has distracted you from your main purpose, which is to worship God in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. So, from these scriptures, we learn that we should always put our cares behind. Hallelujah. We should always put our worries behind. When we come to worship our Father, let us come with all our hearts. Let us come with all our mind here. Let us put aside everything that will easily ensnare us. Hallelujah. Let us put aside everything, every worry. I know uh, the devil will always whisper to your ears. He will always bring worries. What of this? You're worshipping God, but you not have done this. You are worshipping your God, but you have not achieved this. But let us put, the Bible says that we should put all that behind. And when we come to the Father, hallelujah, when we come to the Most High, let us come with all our heart, hallelujah. Let us all come uh, to worship him and him alone. Praise the Lord. In the Bible, the book of Acts chapter 10, uh, the Bible talks about of a man of, uh, called Cornelius. He was a centurion. Uh, he worshipped God in an act, even when he was not a Jew. Hallelujah. This centurion, uh, let's read it. It's in Acts chapter There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, of what was called the Italian Regiment. Next verse. A devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Hallelujah. This man was not a Jew, but he used to worship God with all his belongings. In the following verses, you will see him bringing sacrifices. You will see him bringing aromas. And when he burnt these offerings, when he burnt these arms, they reached to the Father. Hallelujah. When they reached the Father, he smelt that sweet 
aroma. When he smelled it, he had to react immediately. Hallelujah. He sent Peter to him so that he could receive the Holy Spirit. He prayed for him and received the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When you worship your God, hallelujah, he will come and intervene in your situation. Hallelujah. When you worship your God, he will sort all your cares. Hallelujah. He will, bring, he will heal you. Hallelujah. When you worship your God, healing will come automatically. Hallelujah. You won't know how it comes. Hallelujah. But when you continue in worship, even the devil will flee away from you. The Bible says that submit to God and the devil resist the devil and he will flee away from you. Hallelujah. The devil will flee away from you when you continue to worship your God. When Job was trying to pass through uh, those hard times uh, and the wife told him, why don't you cast your God and die? And Job replied to the wife and was like, you have spoken as one of the foolish women hallelujah job refused to uh complain job refused to curse his god because he knew who god was he knew that god was a restorer of everything hallelujah god is able to restore everything that you have ever lost hallelujah he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever imagine above all you can ever think oh hallelujah Hallelujah. Just worship him every morning, every hour. Take most of your time in worshiping the Father. And when you come to worship, it's not only a, a song, but come, uh, we come with your whole heart. Hallelujah. It's not just a singing a song. One wise man said that worship is not music. Hallelujah. But as a result of worshiping, music is produced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a result of worshiping, music is produced. When we are to see these gospel artists, hallelujah, when they worship their God with all their heart, and when you worship their God in spirit, we see God starts revealing to them the deep secrets which they will sing in these new songs. Hallelujah. For example, there's a song of Waymaker. Hallelujah. When, when the word was hit by COVID, this song, it was sung even times before COVID. Hallelujah. But when times like COVID came, it became the number one song in the whole world. Hallelujah. Because it was restoring the souls of people. Hallelujah. It was giving hope. Hallelujah. So as people started worshiping, people who had lost all their hope, People who thought that they would die because of COVID-19. Hallelujah. They started worshiping in this song of a way maker. And indeed, God made a way. Hallelujah. Because he says he will make a way, a road in the wilderness. Hallelujah. He's a God who makes the roads in the wilderness. Hallelujah. So when you worship him, he will come before you. Because the uh, the Bible says that when our praises go up, His glory comes down. Hallelujah. When His glory is available, when His glory is available, no circumstance can stand. Hallelujah. No challenge can stand in your midst. When His glory has come, no challenge can stand in your midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as church, I want to encourage us. Let us all put away all our cares hallelujah i know we have very very many cares i know we have been troubled by many things hallelujah but let us focus on worshiping our god we, he will in a miraculous way because the bible says our ways are not his ways hallelujah he will work out in a certain way of which you never expected hallelujah maybe it's your time to start worshiping god it's your time to stop complaining hallelujah that spirit of complaining is not good. If you have that spirit of complaining, you can never worship God. Hallelujah. We have seen like Martha. Instead of focusing of, uh, on worshiping Jesus, because it was the, Jesus said that the poor you are, are with them, but for me I'll be taken away. Martha never knew that. He never knew that there was a time when Jesus would go. Hallelujah. So, but Mary knew the secret. He knew that now when I 
be in the presence of Jesus, all my things will be settled. Hallelujah. All my things will be settled. Hallelujah. And there's a story even in, in the book of First Samuel. Hallelujah. I think that it's the f- chapter 5. Hallelujah. When the children of Israel, they were defeated by the Philistines. Hallelujah. And so they conquered and uh, they took the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. So when they took the Ark of the Covenant, uh, there was a great chaos. That was the time when Prophet Samuel was being called and uh, uh, Eli was uh, taken of him, the minister of the prophecy which he had. Hallelujah. So when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant, they brought it to the house of Dagon. Hallelujah. The house of Dagon is the idol or it's the God of the Philistines. Hallelujah. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant, they brought uh, the Ark of the Covenant into the house of that God of the Philistines. When, uh, when they, they had put that Ark of the Covenant, the next morning they found that idol or the Dagon, it had fallen prostrate. Hallelujah. It literally means that two gods cannot exist in the same place. Hallelujah. One who is powerful will exist. Hallelujah. Or will, uh, we, uh, he, he will be there than the other. Hallelujah. So when that one fell, th- these Philistines came back the next day and rose him again. So when they came back the next morning, also Dagon had fallen prostrate. But this time, the head was cut off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you worship God, the Ark of the Covenant is, contains the presence of God. Hallelujah. And in the presence of God, that's where worship is. Hallelujah. So when that Dagon fell down, the Philistines were afraid. Hallelujah. They knew that this is the God of Israel. Hallelujah. That God who is all powerful. Hallelujah. That's why I want to tell you that every circumstance which is standing before your God, just worship him. It will fall prostrate. Hallelujah. It must fall prostrate. Hallelujah. Every challenge, let it be sickness. It must fall prostrate. Hallelujah. There's nothing that can stand against our God. Our God is all powerful. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Just exalt him. Hallelujah. Just lift him. Come with all your heart. That's worshiping him in spirit. Hallelujah. And there's another text where it says that you must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, sanctify them with, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Hallelujah. His word is truth. Hallelujah. So when he, when he says that you shall worship him in his word, in truth, it simply means that you worship him in truth. Hallelujah. Or you worship him according to his word. Hallelujah. Many a time, most of us, we are not, are not worshiping God in truth. Hallelujah. Oh, they are not worshiping him according to his word. Hallelujah. Simply because we have not taken a relationship, a closer relationship with, this, with his word. Hallelujah. If you have not known his word, there is no way you worship him in truth. Hallelujah. Because you cannot worship something you don't understand. Hallelujah. So if you are to understand the true worship, hallelujah, you must First, know his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs, I think it's the first chapter. It says, incline your ear to my instructions. Hallelujah. He, try, he, he, he wants us to know his word. Hallelujah. Because when we know his word, it will help us to worship him in full knowledge and understanding, which is the truth. Hallelujah. Because he, it has, the Bible has said that the truth is his word. Hallelujah. After knowing his word, you worship your father in truth. Hallelujah. That's why we must read the word. Hallelujah. It is very important to read the word. When challenges come, you are not shaken. 
Hallelujah. When problems come, you are not shaken because you know who he promised is faithful. He will also do it. Hallelujah. He, we, he who began a good work in you, he will bring it into our accomplishment on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when you understand his word, when you come to the full revelation of his word, you start to worship him with all your mind hallelujah with all your heart hallelujah you start to worship him in all circumstances whether there are good good circumstances whether there are good bad situation you start to worship him hallelujah that's why when you're to come to worship god you, you need to first die to yourself hallelujah hallelujah it must be christ who lives in you hallelujah that's why paul understood that in Philippians, I think it's the first chapter, uh, the 25th verse. Hallelujah. He says, for me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Hallelujah. So when you come to such a uh, level, or when you come to such a, such a revelation, hallelujah, you will not mind of what is troubling you. Hallelujah. You will not mind of the cares of these words. Hallelujah. You will not mind of what you have achieved. Many a time, uh, we have been taken up by things which we have achieved. Hallelujah. Things which God has blessed us with. Hallelujah. Maybe you have a very beautiful voice. It's a gift. Hallelujah. But because you have a gift, you're invited somewhere to preach and uh, I've been to, to minister and be like, uh, how much are you going to pay me? Hallelujah. And yet, you have not bought that gift which God has given you. Such a person cannot worship God. Hallelujah. When tough times come, it, it, he will be hit away. Hallelujah. Because he does not understand the full revelation of worship or of true worship. Hallelujah. As I, as I conclude, hallelujah, the Bible says we have such a trust in our God. Hallelujah. We have such, I think it is either 1st or 2nd Corinthians, uh, the first chapter, I uh, don't remember where the verse, but we, the Bible says we have such a trust that we are not sufficient of ourselves as to think of anything by us. But our sufficiency is from God, which has made us able ministers of the new covenant. Hallelujah. It's not our own wisdom that has made us able to serve him. It's not our own capability. Hallelujah. It's not our own wisdom. It's not our own giftings that we have that has made us serve him. But it's, it's, it's God who has made us able. Hallelujah. So our sufficiency... Our sufficiency is from God. When you come to a point when you understand that your sufficiency is of God, then you become a good steward. And when you have become a good steward, you worship your father in season and out of season. Hallelujah. In good times and bad times. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Hallelujah. There's nothing that shall separate us. Hallelujah. Shall I think it is Romans chapter uh, number 8. Get for us the verse. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number 8. Get us the verse. I will try also and get the verse. Hallelujah. L let nothing take... There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation... Shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or sword, or pale separate you from your God? This is a question. Shall anything separate you from, your, from the love of God? He who did not spare his own only son, won't he together with him freely give you all things that you ask? Hallelujah. He who is able to feed the birds in the air, he who is able to Clothe the ladies in the field. Hallelujah. When you ask of him, won't, you, won't he be able to supply you with all your requirements or needs? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let nothing separate us from the love of God. God loves us. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter of anything that you're going through. He says in much waters, he will be with us. In much fires, he will be with us. He will never leave us, neither forsake us. So when we are to the point of knowing his word, hallelujah, when we know his word, we shall not fear, we shall not be stressed, we shall not be worried, hallelujah. Like the worries stopped Martha from, 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 from worshipping Jesus, hallelujah. The, the, her worries stopped her from worshipping the Father, but Jesus told her, for me, I'm soon being taken away. Hallelujah. Why don't you get your time and be with me like your sister Mary? Hallelujah. Mary stayed in the presence of Jesus. It, uh, even she reached an extent of powering her expensive oil. Hallelujah. It's, even the way we offer, it tells us how we worship our God. Hallelujah. Most of us, we bring our money when we have folded it. Hallelujah. You fold it like as if it is a piece of trash. Hallelujah. And bring it into the basket to worship your God. You have not yet known whom you are worshiping. The Bible says the earth and its fullness, they belong to him. So what will your folded 10,000 do to him? Can your money do anything to God? He owns silver and gold. Hallelujah. All his belongings belong to him. Hallelujah. So when you worship to God, God, just come when you're prepared. Hallelujah. Come when you know whom you're going to worship. You know he, you can only know God through his word. Hallelujah. Where he has promised that he, he shall give his, change, his angels uh, charge over us, that we shall not uh, dash our foot against any stone. Hallelujah. He has promised that. Let us only worship him. Hallelujah. And many of us we have put frustration in the ministry of the angels. Hallelujah. We don't know what angels are capable of doing. Let's read uh, Psalms 103, the 20th verse. Psalms 103, the 20th verse. Hallelujah. Psalms 103, the 20th. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. Hallelujah. The angels, they excel in strength and who do his word hallelujah that means angels are always there they do his word but you are not aware of them hallelujah that's why i told that if you are to worship god you must first know his word so if you don't know such a scripture whereby it says that angel in fact it is the word, it's in hebrews where it says that angels are ministering spirits which are sent to, to minister unto the saints. So angels are always there. But the Bible has said that they excel in strength. That means they can do anything. Hallelujah. They are, they are there to do anything. And it says, who do his word? Heeding the voice of his word. If you don't know his word, there is no way you command those angels to work for you hallelujah that's why as a believer you must know his word hallelujah you must read it you must write it in your uh, head you must write the scriptures even in your car in your room hallelujah everywhere there must be scriptures hallelujah so that when times come you know where to refer to hallelujah hallelujah in the first place when i was beginning i said you will examine yourself where, on which side you fall. Whether you are a false worshipper or a true worshipper. Hallelujah. So, I think by now you have already examined who you are. Hallelujah. Let's worship our Father. Let's worship Him in truth. Let's put all our cares behind. Every time we've come in His presence, let's concentrate, concentrate uh, why we are worshiping him hallelujah he will answer us he will bring everything to calmness hallelujah when the sea are, when the sea rose he said see calm down hallelujah he will calm your situation he will calm your problems hallelujah and god will reach to bless you when you worship him even what you had called 
what you in fact what you had given up from hallelujah what you had given up from from hallelujah god will answer that when you worship him hallelujah god bless you when take this example when the ch- when your child comes and is like my father is a good father hallelujah and he starts applauding you he starts worshiping you as a father hallelujah don't you become happy as a father every time you come uh, from work don't you at least carry something for your child because he has he has like exalted you or praised you as his father so if you can do that or if your child can do that how much more will your god do if you worship him hallelujah so let's worship him let's leave our cares to him for he cares hallelujah our lord cares thank you so much god richard bless you um i'd not my name is i forgot even to mention my name my name is senior no patrick and i'm married and i have two nations hallelujah i'm a youth in this place and on the 12th of, of May, we have uh, a li- an outing as the youth. We are going to cover it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So parents, please uh, support your children. It's just 50,000. Transport is already catered for. And God richly bless you. Thank you. Amen. Let, let us clap for Pastor Senyon hallelujah praise the lord thank you very much patrick god bless you hallelujah take it serious worshiping god is very very important we 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 are created we are his own people the bible says he has formed us that we may show forth his praises so let us praise him with with all our heart in spirit and in truth and when we worship him he abides in the praises of his people hallelujah he's seeking for such to worship him if he's seeking for such and you also are seeking for god so you just worship you you meet he comes seeking for worshipers and you also needed him so when he worship you attract him and when he comes here you will tell him your needs praise the lord and the other thing we have we have always told you that we are in a kingdom in the kingdom of god uh, we are not uh, moving there we are already there we in the kingdom of god praise the lord we are in the kingdom of god the day you got saved you moved into the kingdom of god you are now in his kingdom and in that culture we see what happens in revelation chapter 4 let's just look at revelation chapter 4 from verse 8 there are many uh, verses in the revelation that talks about this you had already signed out okay you can look into your bible it is back thanks be to god four living creatures each having wings were were full of eyes all around within and they they do not rest day or night they do not rest day or night saying holy 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 lord god almighty who was and is and is to come next verse whenever the living creatures give glory and the honor and the thanks to to him who sits on the throne who lives forever and ever next verse the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever cast their crowns before the throne saying next you are worthy O lord to receive glory and the honor and the power 
For you created all things by your will, they exist and we are created. That's what happens in heaven. We have those living creatures, maybe we can call them the choir team. They stand and they begin to worship, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. And when they begin to worship, the congregation, that is the 24 elders, in other verses in, in that book of Revelation, you will see even all the spirits of the, the righteous people who are already in heaven and the angels, they join. The Bible says they don't cease and they do not rest day or night. What happens in the kingdom of God is worship. No rest day and night. They worship. And now that we believe that we are already in the kingdom of God, this is the culture of the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, there is no rest. They worship day or night. They don't cease. They keep worshiping. Holy, holy, oh bless you. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the one who sits on the throne. And when they begin to worship, the entire congregation joins in worship. And for them, they say, it's worthy to receive that glory because he created everything. Praise the Lord. He did not only create man, but he created everything. He created even the car you came driving. Praise the Lord. And you will tell him, no, pastor, it was made by Japanese. But the Japanese got the minerals that God created and they made that. And even the Japanese that made that car were made by God. So God created all things. Praise the Lord. Now that he created all things, therefore all things must worship him. And they must worship him in spirit and truth. Unfortunately, many people have not known that, but God has loved you in a special way and he has called you into this kingdom. Hallelujah. We are already in the kingdom. We are not going to the kingdom. Those of us who are born again, we are already in the kingdom. So you must be aware. Abaganda baga wogende buliambua na wofuka muliambua. Praise the Lord. When you go to a certain culture, you become that culture. Hallelujah. You become that culture. Now that you have come to a culture of worship, let us worship him. And there is a lot of benefits in worshiping God. David is having a, a, a history of not losing any war. Praise the Lord. In the history, among the kings of Israel, David never lost any battle. He succeeded in every battle. Why? He was a worshiper. David was a worshiper. He's a man who worshipped God. Even in a hard time, David would find a reason to worship God. When he was surrounded by enemies, David would find the time and worship God. And because he was a worshiper, he never complained. Sometimes we complain because we are not worshippers. When you are not careful, you hear people beginning to ask God, God is in heaven, you are on earth. You, the, the, the enemies that you have are human beings like you. So what you need to do, worship God, give him praise, he will handle. Praise the Lord. The, the singer sang, I love the way you handle my situation. I love the way you fight for me. 
Praise the Lord. So David never lost any battle because he was a worshiper. Hallelujah. Yeah, David is one of my mentors. You know, a mentor is somebody you admire and you learn from. You learn from his behavior. David is one of my mentors. Me, I have mentors. I have mentors who are still alive and I have mentors who are already in heaven. I, I, I emulate them. I look at them and copy them. I, I, I love to live their life. I try to study about their life, to understand how they, they behaved, how they lived, and I try to live like them. Because God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of David, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So always find somebody who succeeded, succeeded with God in the Bible. And even in our days, we have people we can look at. Praise the Lord. People who have succeeded with God. People who have worked. We have them internationally. We have them everywhere. Some of them are already dead. I have people I, I, I look at and I study from. And some of them are already dead. One of them is called Kenneth Ejini. Kenneth Ejini, I love him because I, I, I admire his type of faith. Praise the Lord. And I admire his type of faith and the, the results. The results from his faith impresses me. I feel impressed by their results. So, David is one of my mentors, but he was a worshiper. So, worship is very, very important. In fact, we should not... I always tell people, and I'm very serious, for a believer to be stressed, there's still some lack, some immaturity. Mm, I challenge you, I know most of you get stressed. But the reason why you are stressed is because you are still lacking something. Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Jesus taught about that. He said, why do you worry? Who of you by much worry can change anything? If you cannot change it, why are you worried of it? Just leave it to one who can change it. Am I accepting defeat? No, I don't accept defeat. Actually, I've refused defeat. That's why I've, I've reported it to God who is able to handle it. And I've cast my cares upon him. I'm not swallowing my cares. I'm not embracing my cares. But I've cast them upon the Lord. And I tell you the devil, I've not given up, but I've handled you to the one who is going to crush you. And I want to promise you, within a few times, you will be gone. And they have always gone. Devils, diseases, and problems, I hand them over. I don't accept stress. I reject it. I refuse it. And I intentionally rejected it. And I don't remember when I last got stressed. In the city, I was in the city. In the city, I was in Stubbornly. Praise the Lord. Stubbornly. Nkangevizu. Nambwenye ndoksi marangabu wa Mr. Sende Gea. Inechi ziwechi na ayanji na kukara hanga ya kwa ta Sende Gea. Ekate re Sende Gea yomu ngareza mani. Because, yeah, that's how God does his things. There was a time when I was stressed. I was almost getting stressed. I was somehow stuck, but me I refused stress. And uh, I thought, mm, Lord, this is your house. If you want it to be built, it will be built. If you, you think we should uh, pause, I will pause. Praise the Lord. The other thing, if you are going to be free, first, first and foremost, to be free from people. Most of you are bound because of people. What will people say? Eh? People's opinion. In zone kolera ko opinion is only mura lu gendo ze kolera ko. On that thing, I don't have any nice word. Opinion, opinioting on me. Go and opinion on yourself. Don't you have yourself? Nzinsula wa nzinsula now. 
Uwamba ni bobo pangi saka yumba nga karumu imunga ni kube etumia Mtu takumanyira nga nga kuteka kwa pini yonze Let him open your teeth on himself People seek because of people's opinion Haba tu ni bagamba, chini bagamba Ubaba ni yaba siru Bako enda kwa pini yoni ingari nyowe Lekaba fengkaba pumbavu Bi nebi ziwebi yago na nyenye nebi anji Yemirama guruga o simiranga Stand on your feet Be free from man If you want to be free from stress Be free from what? From confused men Let me tell you The Bible Actually it is not Bible Someone said Cheap people discuss people Cheap people discuss what? When you hear someone discussing you or discussing somebody, that one is cheap. Do you want to do you want to stop on cheap people? Keep on moving. Serious people discuss matter. Praise the Lord. In a year, cheap people begin to discuss Richam Z. Richam Yes, Chris, I don't look at what on another man's eye because yourself has your own. That's why me, I don't discuss people. It never come to me to discuss people. Me, I don't discuss people because I'm not a cheap man. How many do not discuss people? You are, you are not cheap. You should never discuss people. Discuss matter. Because some people think, what would people say? What would people say? What would people say? Don't allow your life to be lived with many people. Living your life. Olaba na we cause to wede robla mubo. Kakati ato yongereke chalo chona. O food. Bagenda kuzi kango limuto. Abanyabuzara. Abanyabuzara. Tumuti bine biyabo. Baze kuhinga, baba tine chokora. Baze umisiri. Ireben shuye, liyone korachi. Kubara are kemisiri bakazari iwe, baruge. Abatu nimeja gambachi, nimeja gambachi. Kantaka kuzire mpare ndijo. Baze gureza abu. Bare ebile no bashave mpare zabu. Aba mwenye muti ina nuku zuara Nuzu hana kwa kama tunu vizu waka amba Nyewe na zuara ilaze wemba na ya amba de Na ya amba de Ebi siga de bibyo Wena vira wano nengi ingira muduka Ni ngulolo goyo ronze na luagala Elana mwenze siba tunulira Siri na budebu wa moba wa ya amba dote bibyo bibyo That's how you are going to be free in this life. Otherwise, there are some people who enjoy to talk about you. But no, you are tie. You are tie. You are You are tie. You Mwasula nansana Who cares Pastor Asula nansana Who cares Mwasula chanja Imuse mikono sinze mukama Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord be free always and worship the Lord. You know you can't worship when you are calling the whole village. You can't. That's why people can't worship. When you are calling the entire village, you can't worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for Pastor Senyondo, Patrick, for the word. Thank you for the word we have received from Pastor Senyondo, Patrick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We shall worship you in Jesus' name. Now get hold of your offering. Let's give to the Lord. This evening, don't miss the youth service. It's going to be fire as we prepare for. Baguzene vuvulvera. Abaso vo de frimbi na voba frimbi. Ataso vo de vuvulvera nechi gula diangu na kasefuli ya koboko. 
Jangu ne chidomola. Praise the Lord. So this evening is going to be fire. The youth are here to invite you. Don't miss the evening. Do you invite the elder? Brava chaine mi gonge jibuka. Baje. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's pray for our offerings. Brethren, we, we are going on with construction. We need your money. We need your support. We need it seriously. Where we are. In fact, tomorrow, today they were going to work. We stopped them. We said, please, we are going to be in the church. We don't want you to disturb us. But you tomorrow just pass there. But as you see them there, the machines are empowering these nkokotonauti. It means we need your help. Bring your million. I want to thank those who have continued bringing money. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you abundantly. Anga kwangazi. Nabiju kuruba wabataribu wa senti. Kande chechi ntwechi tiron tuombe. Kande chabiju kuru nabiju kuru tuombe. Chirechi ntwechi gumire. Ito ntuja kufatu chisige wo. Konkabiju kuruba wabariyachi korachi. Bariyachi ramizamu. Mbwenu leta senti. Or, or, or investing for the life, the spiritual life of your grandchildren. Let the choir come over. Let me pray for the offerings. But we need your money. We need your support. God bless you. Those of you who are brought, keep bringing. And Hazan to Chombeka. Mute yo mukono mchire Hazan to Chombeka. Hazan to Chombeka. Chigambira ni nisha kuta musente nkwombeka. Chigambira ma ni nte kwa kuta musente nkwombeka. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the offerings. We thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the word we have received, the word of worship. And we pray, oh God, accept our worship, accept our praising as we worship you. And with what you have given us, we bring money to worship you with it. Receive our tithes and receive our offerings. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless.